Welcome. In this session on multilayer neural nets, we'll look at an application to batch data. So by batch data, we mean that we have more than one data one form that's coming in. And for each one of these, the gradient is a distinct one form. And this is similar to what we had for a single artificial neuron. The steepest descent that we had for a single artificial neuron was the sum of the one forms. We did this in terms of a product, but we can also do it just in terms of a straight sum. This means that we can stack the one forms into a single matrix, that's a Jacobian matrix, for the output layer. The residual errors will be a vector, and the gradient of the objective then becomes, we'll take the residual errors, transpose them, and multiply them by this stack of the gradient one forms for each one of those data. So each one of these gradient one forms is created as we described in the previous session. Let's take a classic problem in neural networks. It's sometimes referred to as the exclusive OR or the XOR problem. And what we have in this is labels that are not linearly separable, and they're sometimes referred to as being in opposite quadrants. So here, what I've done is I've generated a bunch of random data, and this is all class 1, and this is also class 1, and then these are class 0. That is, I'm giving the label y equals 1 to these data vectors, and then I'm giving the label y equals 0 to these data vectors. And with a single neuron, we can't solve this exclusive OR problem because there's no single line, in, no hyperplane, which in 2D is a line, that will separate the ones from the zeros. We can use two layers, and all we need are two hidden neurons to solve this problem. When I solve this, using a fixed step size, so uh, you might think of that in neural networks as being a constant learning rate, what happens is that there will be a, a hyperplane for each one of those hidden neurons, and then layer one will combine the res responses. So there's a hyperplane for hidden neuron number one, a hyperplane for hidden neuron number two, and then these have sigmoid um, activation functions that are applied to them, and here is the result, is that the way that we can visualize the result of this computation is one of these hidden neurons has this hyperplane, and it's saying everything on this side is plus and this side is minus. The other hidden neuron will be doing the opposite. It'll say everything that is on this side of its hyperplane is plus, on that side is minus, it happens to have not done it the way that a human would do. A human might have drawn a line, for example, through here, but it's, it's not using lines, it's using sigmoids, because that hidden layer has a nonlinear activation. So we can, we can now take the, this simple neural network that we had, and we can start to visualize what it's doing. Well, we can also take a look at what those weights are, because for each one of these, the data input to this is a two vector. And when we append one, that's three. And so we could represent that weight vector as being in three dimensions. And that would be the W hat appended, and to which we've appended a 1 uh, 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 to which we've appended the b, the bias term, and so we can take that w plus the b, and that's a vector in 3 space. So we can have a vector in 3 space that represents the, the, the augmented weight vector for one hidden neuron. We can have a different one for number 2, and then we can have a third one for number 3, because when we take these two hidden neurons together that they would have a, a, a simple weight vector of size 2, and then we add its bias term and 3. So let's take a look at what happens with these traps. Here I'm going to use cyan and magenta to represent the um, weight vectors 
for the hidden layer, and I'll use black, or in this case white, because of the color reversal. Um, and black is in the written notes, and what will happen is this will rapidly approach a minimizer, and then it'll have a slow convergence. So what's happening here is that for one of the hidden neurons, it fairly rapidly converges. For another one, it, it, it rapidly gets close and then gradually converges. And then for the output layer, what happens is it goes along quite rapidly, and then it oscillates. And we can now start to understand that there are different ways that we could approach this steepest ascent problem. Here we can see that the hidden layer is learning rapidly and that the, um, the learning rate for the output layer is not working quite as well. So we could imagine taking our um, objective function and we could imagine breaking this apart and we could use a different learning rate for the different layers and we would accomplish the same task and possibly we would get it either more accurately or we would converge faster. So these are some of the observations that we can make about um, a very simple artificial neural network.